Welcome to a Purple Chips tutorial webinar. I'm John Schwinghammer, the author of Purple Chips, published by John Wiley & Sons and available everywhere. First, I would like you to pause this disclaimer screen here and just read through the disclaimer. So if you can do that for a second, then we'll move on. Thank you. Today's webinar, tutorial webinar, is about uh, distinguishing between purple chips and blue chips. The, uh, the terms are often confused, and uh, this is the reason why I came up with purple chips, because there is a huge difference, and you'll see that in a moment. To start with, I'd like to go through some of the basic criteria, and uh, I'll show you those. Uh, the basic criteria, there's three criteria when we talk about purple chips. There's uh, the steady and predictable earnings per share. EPS. We should have seven years or more of growing EPS, earnings per share, and the minimum market capitalization should be about one billion dollars or more. And that's because we want to look at big companies that are not going to be changing their, uh, their direction or their strategies very quickly. We want things to be steady as she goes. We're looking for low-risk investments that have good to reasonable returns. Now, Let's move on to, um, hold on a second, I'm just going to switch to the next page. Okay, what I want to do in this, uh, in this tutorial is I want to highlight the differences between uh, some common blue chips and some exceptional purple chips. And specifically, um, we'll talk about AT&T, about DuPont, about Verizon, which are commonly referred to as blue, blue chips, and then we'll talk about Walmart, Aflac and Johnson & Johnson, which you may know are among the top 25 purple chips. And I think very quickly you'll see the difference in these stocks. So let's start with a quick visual examination of AT&T. So here you're looking at a 20-year chart of AT&T, and it becomes fairly obvious when you look at this. The purple heavy line is the earnings per share line over the last 20 years, and you can see that uh, what's happened is that, I'm, I'm going to highlight it here, as we speak here, uh, AT&T is earning somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 229 per share, but if you look back, let's say 10 years ago, in, in around 2000, AT&T was earning approximately the same amount. So, in effect, we're still earning the same amount as we were 10 years ago, and therefore it comes as no surprise that the stock is still at the same level as it was 10 years ago. So we've had, you know, gyrations and earnings. Earnings have gone up, down, and actually, if you uh, put an average through there, they've actually gone sideways. So AT&T is a classic blue chip. It's got a nice, uh, nice dividend, and people think it's a great stock, but I would argue that it's not a very good stock. It's certainly not the kind of stock I'm looking for. Now let's look for another one here, another classic blue chip. Let's talk about Dupont DD. Again, let's look at the earnings. Where have they gone in the last 10 years? Well, in fact, if I said 10 years ago, what were the earnings compared to today? They've only progressed very, very slightly. We've had ups and downs, okay? The earnings have gone all over the place. But in fact, we're just slightly higher today. Okay, we're sitting at this level here, which is around $4.13 a share compared to where we were 10 years ago, which was about 375, 380 a share. So this is not a great company. And again, uh, DuPont pays a high dividend. Okay, if I looked at the, uh, the actual dividends per share, uh, I can see here, okay, and I'll just show you this. This is from my Thomson Reuters screen. The yield is 3.5%. So not a purple chip stock. Now let's look at another one. The last one in my example is Verizon. So Verizon, first of all, I'll just point out that Verizon pays 4.5%, and I've circled it there. That's the yield on the stock. And uh, at this point, it comes as no surprise that we have not had any growth in earnings. In fact, it's been quite the opposite. The earnings have been going down for the last 10 years. So since 2000, Earnings used to be around this level, around 310, and they're currently around the uh, 230 mark. 
So we've had a situation where earnings have gone, in fact, down. So it comes as no surprise again that the stock is down. Now, let's talk about some really fantastic stocks, okay, which are purple chips. And this is why we came up with the book and why we've got a website and why we believe that investing in purple chips is absolutely the smartest thing that an investor can do. Because why would you invest anywhere else? Let's look at Walmart. Now this is a purple chip stock. Look at the earnings progression over the last 20 years. Never a hiccup, okay, even when times were, let's say, I would call this a bad period for Walmart, the earnings were flat. But if you look at the last 20 years, you've got a beautiful upward progression in earnings. And that's the sort of thing that you're looking for. You can make money in a stock like this. If the earnings keep going, the chances are that at some point, those earnings are going to propel the stock price higher. Now, let's look at another stock. We're going to look at Aflac. Again, Aflac is one of the top 25 purple chips. Very similar profile. Look at the earnings growth. You've got, in the last 20 years, earnings moving up beautifully. That's what you're looking for because the beautiful rise in earnings is what will move the price higher. The earnings are what determine the price ultimately. So again, this is a hallmark of a purple chip stock. Let's move over to another stock that we like a lot, which is Johnson & Johnson. Symbol J&J. &J. Look at the profile again. The thing that these purple chip stocks have in common, they always keep building their earnings. If a company keeps making more money, it's worth more money. That's the, the whole theory behind purple chips. So look at the earnings progression on this stock. You've got Johnson & Johnson, rising earnings the whole time. So what happens? This stock keeps rising. So if you buy at the right valuations, and when you understand the rules of the purple chips model, you understand that you're also buying at low valuations. The low valuations in the case of Johnson & Johnson were right where I've drawn this red line. So that's pretty much it. That is, uh, that's all for now. And, and now you can see the differences between blue chips and purple chips. Purple chips are far superior. And purple chips pay a good dividends because don't forget that dividends are the result of growing earnings. So a company that has growing earnings will keep raising dividends. And this is a hallmark that we often see. doesn't mean every purple chip pays a dividend. But a great company starts with great earnings. So that's all for now. I'm John Schwinghammer, the author of Purple Chips, and thank you for watching.